I'm Miss Laura with the Wichita Falls Arts Council and today we're going to create this faux fur blob or simple shape covered with layered fringe that will cut out of a plain sheet of construction paper. To do this we'll need one sheet of construction paper, a plain sheet of white paper, a pencil, a glue stick, and a pair of scissors to do a lot of cutting. The first thing we're going to use is our white sheet of paper oh, and our pencil. So we need to start by creating a simple shape for our blob. So it could lean maybe towards an egg shape or a pear shape. Like these, this one is kind of in the shape of an avocado. Um, it doesn't really matter what your shape is, but I think we're gonna try to keep it to simple curves and a simple shape. And then maybe if you wanna add something to it later, then you can make it not so simple. So I like to start by taking my hand, closing all of my fingers and then placing it on my paper. Um, my blob or bean thing is going to be about the size of my hand with all of my fingers closed. So I'm gonna lightly trace around my hand, sort of see what size it looks like on a piece of paper. So I know just about how big to make my blob. So it doesn't have to be in the shape of my closed hand, but it does help to see how big it should be. So it can be a little bit smaller or a little bit larger. So I think I'm gonna go for more of a bean shape. We're just creating an outline on our white paper that we're then going to cut out on the line that we make. Once you're satisfied with your simple shape, you're gonna grab your scissors and cut it out. Once our shape is cut out, we're going to need to create some paper fringe out of our construction paper that we're going to layer onto and glue, starting from the bottom, going all the way to the top of our blob to create this layered furry surface. So I'm gonna grab my construction paper sheet. In order to create these thin fringe strips, I'm gonna start by folding my paper in half. And I'm doing that hamburger style. So I'm lining up the corners, holding the paper down with one hand and using my other hand to make a crease going across. And then using this crease, I'm gonna grab my scissors and cut right on that crease line to divide my paper into two same size pieces. So now my paper is in two pieces. On For both pieces, I'm going to fold them both in half hot dog style or long, long ways, long ways. And I will also cut these in half on my folded line. So again, cutting on that crease line and cutting both pieces that I end up with four pieces of paper. Okay. 
I'm going to take all four of these pieces and fold them in half hot dog style again, but this time I'm not going to cut them apart. I'm going to keep them intact. And the reason we keep these together instead of cutting them apart, and we will eventually cut them apart, it's just so that we could, or so that we can take our scissors and cut a fringe into them while cutting two pieces at the same time. So I'm gonna hold them closed and starting um, cutting from the open side, I'm gonna start cutting a fringe. So I'm cutting pretty close to the top of my paper where that crease line is, but I'm leaving a little bit of room. I want a nice sort of area here that I can glue my fringe onto and keep all of these little strips together. So I can either cut this one all the way across or I could even fold it in half and end up cutting four pages out at the same time or I could even nest two of them together. And also cut four at the same time. But you may be more comfortable cutting just two at a time and that's fine. Okay, once you've cut all of your strips into fringes, I need to cut them apart. Separate all of these, open them up, and then cut on that crease line. Okay, now that I have all my fringes ready to go, I'm going to reintroduce my cutout shape. And start gluing fringes to the shape. So I'd like to apply glue only to my white paper shape and then stick the fringes onto it. It's important to remember that we're only gluing, we're trying to only glue 
this top part of the strip and not the little hairs because we want them to sort of be free. So I'm gonna start at the bottom and all of my fringes are going to face the same direction. Oh, it may even be helpful to take a little bit of the of the top part of one of the fringes and then glue it to the bottom to create a little patch of color. So I'm just applying a little bit of glue to the bottom of my shape. And adding a little bit of color here and then trimming off the excess. Okay. I'm going to work my way up. So I can place my fringe on my shape and make sure it goes just a little bit past the bottom. Hold it there, make sure it's going to both sides at the top or it's extending beyond both sides. And then I can take my pencil and draw a line and trace right where that fringe top ends. That way I know where to apply glue. So I'm applying glue right under the pencil line And then taking my fringe and sticking it on right at that pencil line. And I'm gonna cut the excess off as I go so I can just flip my blob over, grab my scissors and cut off any of this fringe that's sticking out. I'm going to keep moving up, overlapping each of the fringe or fringes as I glue them. So this one, the next one is going to be slightly higher and then I'll glue another one on top slightly higher. And then I'm just going to keep moving all the way up until this whole thing is covered in fringe and I've met the top of my shape. So I can keep using my pencil. Or once I get a better sense of how much to move up the next piece and the next piece, then I might not need to make that pencil line.
Okay, once you've glued fringes all the way to the top of your blob, you can pick it up, bend it back a little bit, or fluff up some of the fringes. Paper has a memory, so when we bend it back like this, it doesn't bend all the way back, and that's what causes some of the little fringes to stick up. It's like petting a cat backwards. You can either keep your blob as a blob or you can even add things to it. I turned this blob into a cat with a hat. Great, thank you for joining me and see you later.